President Muhammad Buhari talks tough, threatened to deal with promoters of insurrection while Twitter takes down his tweets. And what is the effect of Nigeria's insecurity challenge on humanitarianism in the country? Well, this and more on Fast Politics. I am Mariana Cole. President Muhammad Buhari has warned those promoting crime and insurrection in the country, noting that his regime will treat them in the language they understand. The president also said that many of those misbehaving today are too young to be aware of the destruction and the loss of lives that occurred during the Nigerian Civil War. Some Nigerians, however, expressed their anger and warnings uh, at the warnings, by the way, uh, uh, by Mr. President, as the statements did not go down well with them. Well, joining us to have this conversation is uh, Monde Ubani, legal practitioner, former President Ohanes Ndigbo Odozi Ngodozi, and Muritala Abubakar. But before we get to our guest, thank you gentlemen for joining us. Let's take a look at a clip of Mr. President speaking about the insecurity in Nigeria. So whoever wanted diversion or destruction of the system at this point, I think we'll soon have their shock of their lives. I think we have given them enough latitude. They have made their case. They just wanted to destroy the country. Simple. Because what do they want? And we are concentrating on infrastructure because no country or institution can be developed without infrastructure. What is happening in the Southeast, attacking police station, killing the police, uh, taking away arms and ammunition. Now, for those of us who are unfortunate to be in the field for the 30 months of the civil war, to see the carnage of how we kill ourselves, at least a million people. I think those that are misbehaving, they were either too young, they didn't know what happened. But for those of us who went through all these things, uh, we, we can't understand. So we will treat them in the language they understand. So I. I feel for your understanding and so on. We are going to be very hard sooner than later. Um, we have done our best, changed the service chiefs and the IG. We allow them time to go around uh, to make necessary changes for them to be firmly in charge. We'll try and give them the resources they require and we will demand the security. Well, I'm sure that my guests have listened or watched this video over and over again. But I'm going to start with um, Barista Obani. Barista Obani, we, we all obviously have seen Mr. President's tweets. We have heard him speak. Um, you listened to that video. He started by saying that um, he, his government is concentrating on infrastructure and that without infrastructure, you can't really build or develop a country. And uh, I also watched the part of the video where the president was saying that, or asking a question more like, am I not leading the country according to the constitution? Um, so let's start from there. You are a lawyer, obviously. Um, do, do Nigerians have a problem with the president's leadership style or the fact that he does not lead us according to the law, or could we could, could the president be misconstruing what Nigerians are asking for to him not leading according to the constitution? Yeah, thank you uh, for, for having me. Uh, we must admit the fact that, that there are issues uh, with us as a nation. 
uh, in terms of uh, insecurity, Nigeria is no longer a safe place uh, for anyone at this uh, juncture because uh, virtually every day you hear about uh, people being killed. The economic situation also is not uh, uh, in good state. People are unemployed. There is hunger in the land. Economically, people are not uh, happy uh, with the style of governance and, and the kind of hardship people are facing currently. Apart from that, there are so other issues, you know, people have been complaining about, about the issue of our structure as a nation, that we need to actually think out with the structure, that the defective system is affecting governance, and people are not effectively getting what they ought to get, you know, as, uh, as citizens of, uh, of Nigeria. Uh, we elected a leader who will address some of the issues that we were complaining about of the previous government. But those issues are still uh, reoccurring, and so people are complaining. And so, but the president and some of his aides do not feel what Nigerians are feeling. They think that they are doing uh, their best, but I don't think that their best is uh, is good enough. And, and and people are reacting. Now, the president has a right to be angry and, and feel frustrated, especially when basic infrastructures or uh, structures in place like INEC offices are being burned anywhere. But the manner of communication is what people are complaining about. And that is actually what had led to Twitter pulling down his statement uh, from, uh, from his account, that it was clearly a threat uh, by a president of a country that at this juncture should be employing some uh, level of language that will actually unite us rather than further divide the country. You don't use threat to govern people. There are some certain things you need to say, especially with reference to the civil war he made mention and then referring to a particular region. I say it, you know, without any fear of contradiction that virtually everywhere in the country is unsafe now. And there are lives that have been lost, that there are destruction all over the place, that we will need a president that will be clearly impartial and talk tough to all the criminal elements all over the country, whether they're in the north, whether they're in the south, whether they're in the southeast or in the southwest. The president should be talk, talking, say, look, we need to really have peace for us to move as a nation and speak in such a manner that shows that he's a father. But when you now begin to speak a specific region and make reference, and do it as if that is the only place where there are issues, where there are issues all over the country. Then, of course, people have a right to complain, and they have complained to Twitter. And naturally, Twitter has reacted and said, look, the, the statement itself are falling below the standard they require, you know, especially of a leader of a nation, and that's why they have put it down. So I think that the president must be properly advised to now at, re, look at his strategy, look at the way of communication, look at the language he should employ in matters like this in order to ensure that we unite ourselves run a country that all of us shall be happy. If there are any area people are complaining, then let, let him actually address those areas you know, in such a manner that he shows that he's the father of the entire nation. That would be my advice you know, to the president rather than the threat. The threat would rather polarize us the more. Okay, let me go to Muritala. Muritala, um, I'm going to quote the president because um, in this statement he did say um, in some parts of that video, um, what do they want me to do that I'm not doing? This is the president saying it. Um, he asked a lot of questions. Um, and like I said to Barista Albani, he asked, am I not leading the country according to the constitution? Now I wanna follow up um, from what Barista Albani said. We have been asking the president to speak. Nigerians have been saying, we need the president to speak. We want him to address the issues. We want him to send shock waves through the spines of these terrorists and people who are trying to divide the country or cause mayhem. And now the president has spoken. What do Nigerians really want? Well, uh, thank you very much for having me. My name is Marcella Avakar. I'm the joint, I'm the convener joint action committee of Northern Youth Associations. And then I will align myself strongly with the presentation by my colleague. And then I also wish to commend your program because even from the tune, the selection of the topic you want us to discuss is not meant to polarize, but rather to provide solution to our many problems. And then, um, just like he said, uh, as a president, he's supposed not to be seem to be overwhelmed by whatever challenge and even resort to uh, threat and the uh, use of other languages. For instance, if you said the language the uh, IPOP understood, which of many of us is just anarchy, are you saying that the federal government as a constituted authority is going to resort to anarchy as well? This, I think, is a wrong choice of words. So the president have all the constitutional power to deal with any challenges. 
within the constitutional uh, arrangement. So what we expected to hear from the president at this trial moment is to inspire Nigeria and to convince us what they are doing within their possible uh, uh, power to bring uh, sanity, to bring law and order, and to restore peace in all the troubled area in the country. And um, just like he, you, 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 you asked, he, the president, you can see, he was acting frustratedly that uh, am I leading the country according to the constitution? Yeah, he may be to his own, and uh, to, to uh, from him his own perspective, and then people around him maybe they, they think they are doing their best or they are doing well. But like uh, Mr. well, the president said, the president did say, Mr. Bubaka, the president did say expressly. I'm sorry, Mr. Bubaka, the president did say expressly that they are doing their best. He said it again and again. He said he's, he's, he's fired the service chiefs, he brought new that, service chiefs, he's given us a new IGP. So, so, so our response is that the best is not enough. And at the same time, um, the president has the constitutional right. That is why he's commander in chief of the armed forces. He has all the coercive apparatus to utilize, to bring about any uh, a, a, a situation that, that that would threaten the corporate existence of this country. So we are not expecting him to use the kind of language he, he, he used. But uh, making reference to Southeast, we also have to look at the context. So because the people that came are from the INF, and they came to report to the president that their facilities, their offices, and all uh, all their these things are being attacked in the north. Sorry, in the southeast. So, and that is why he's making reference to this particular distance. So we have to look at it and let us be very honest with ourselves because uh, promoting sentiment and then uh, uh, ethnic hatred will not help at this material time. So what is required is people, is for all of us to join hand and bring about uh, and restore peace in that trouble area. Okay, back to you, Barisal Bani. Um, he just made mention of the fact that the Southeast it was being... Um, referred to by Mr. President, and there's been an uproar on social media. People are reacting, um, and I have seen a couple of those reactions. But um, there are people who have also said that th when it comes to the issues in the Southeast, the President seems to have double standards. There seems to be more action and more aggress aggressiveness um, in terms of you know security and going after people who cause mayhem. Now, nobody's saying that it's okay to have the kind of disturbances that we've seen, especially in Imo State. And of course, the fact that INEC offices have been targeted. Um, there have been theories like that have been propounded, of course, conspiracy theories, that this is because elections do not want, or they do not want elections to be held in the Southeast. But let's look at the body language of Mr. President when it comes to the Southeast. Um, do these people have a, re a reason to say that he has double standards when it comes to the Southeast? And if, if, if for example, I, w I were to buy into that, you know, theory, um, if the president is not using the same form of powers in other parts of the country, must he sit back and watch what is happening in the southeast so that he doesn't look like he's biased? No, I, I, I won't. Lie. I, I am not happy with what is actually present playing out in the southeast. The the level of destruction that is going on, the attack on security agents, and even the destruction of INEC office that is presently taking place in the South is something that any sane person should condemn. That is not how to go about agitating for a better country, all of us, economic lives and properties. All in, you are creating anarchy, you are, you are region. You are even uh, attracting some of these uh, uh, army and policemen to invade your region and begin to do things that are clearly, clearly not convenient, you know. So I condemn in totality what is playing out presently in the Southeast, and we don't want it. But having said that, it is also imperative and important that a president should be very impartial in his approach to anything that happened, other criminally anywhere in the, in the entire country. That same day that the president was talking about the Southeast and making reference to the Civil War, there was a kidnap that took place by the bandits in Niger State, where how many students were kidnapped that same day. And we didn't hear the president uh, in the language in warning the bandits in such a manner. 
We also did not see the president, you know, the present presidency, you know, was very angry with the, with the, with the governors of the South when they came out to ban open grazing and said, no, that they have no right to do all that. But I didn't see the president say, look, these bandit, bandits and the hastemen that are killing and causing so much mayhem in the southern region that they, these things should stop. So what I need is clearly impartiality. If anyone knows who I am and the role I play for the emergence of the president of this country, that is President Buhari. I mean, people, people who know what I did in 2014 and 2015. Mm -hmm. To the extent that the president himself has spoken to me on phone two times through Mr. Femi Adeshino. He arranged it for the president to appreciate what I did. I didn't care who he, you know, that was coming. I, I minded of who is coming to make this country to be a better country, to run Nigeria as a father of the nation, and not to show impartiality in his governance. But my president, specifically, where, while in America, was saying that he's going to show favor to those who gave him 95%, and of course, to those who gave him only 5%, he's going to, you know, he said it openly. And from one of his body language, every time there is any issue in the South, is, you know, he comes and talks to but it doesn't do the same when other regions are involved. So that impartiality is actually what has uh, become very provocative in most instances when the president speaks. Yeah, we want the president to speak to us, but we want a president that will speak a language of peace. We want a president that will speak a language now of unity. We want a president now that will talk to Nigerians in such a manner to show, look, I care for all of you. Whatever problems and, and, and situation that is happening in the country, I care about, and I'm, I'm going to solve it. That language is what will make everyone to give his best in order to... But when you are threatening people who are already frustrated and doing certain that are very, very con are not convenient, then you are putting pushing them to the edge again, and they will begin to do things that are not convenient, and then dividing and polarizing the nation and all that. So the language of peace, the language of reappointment, the language of, of reconciliation, the language of what is it that you guys are undergoing, I would, I would deal with it, I would solve it. It's a language now that a president should employ, and not language of trade, because the more you keep on threatening these guys, who, to me, you know, are behaving like people who are insane. I mean, somebody going to attack policemen with God, going to release uh, prisoners, shows that there is the level of insanity with you know, certain behavior. So it is no longer normal. So it requires a, a higher understanding of a president to now speak to these people. What is the issue? Whatever is the issue, let's come to the table and discuss it. And I, I'm here to solve it as a father of the nation. So the language now will be different from language of threat, you know, because these guys... No matter what you threaten them, you know, they are already they are already giving up themselves. They don't even mind about their lives anymore. So that is why I think that the president should be a bit more mindful in the kind of language he will employ in addressing some of these uh, teaching problems that is affecting this nation. The language of threat at this point in time, I think is clearly, clearly inconceivable and will not help in reconciliation and bringing and unifying us as a nation because we really need peace. You know, the president himself said it that we need peace in order for us to give good governance. We need peace for those basic infrastructures to be built. But the moment there is anarchy, the moment there is war, the moment there is no peace, then those things that we desire for our nation will not come to fruition. So I think that the language okay. must be said in such a manner to bring uh, unity and all that. That, that. that is my take. The president uh, is clearly, clearly impartial. You know what I mean? I mean, impartial in most of the actions or any time you speak, you know, anything that happens about the South is, I see the president sometimes, you know, speak with so much vehemence and so much hatred in him and all that. And he, may, he, may, he may be, he may, I, may be I may be wrong. You know, but I also want him to use such vehemence and anger when other other you know uh, crime you know other people from other region commit such a crime in such a manner. Let him show that vehemence. When people see it, they will now say, okay, the president is right because he doesn't show any level of uh, uh, partiality. But when you see him always you know you know coming so low, uh, high and you know on people who who may have committed crime from the south east, and he doesn't hide it anywhere. You know it occurs. You know it shows that there is something that is fundamentally wrong in his style of governance, and okay. he needs to change. And as I said earlier, some okay. of us played a very major role in his emergence, and we still love him as a president, but he should, at this point in time, okay. try to be a bit more tactful. Let me go back approach. to Mr. Bubaka. Mr. Bubaka, just to pick up from where Bishop Pani stopped, he kept emphasizing on the fact that we need peace, and the president also said so. But if the president is saying in one breath that we need peace, and then he's saying that he's going to go all out to deal with those who are perpetrating evil, um, in a manner that they understand, which means, of course, it's going to, it's going to be a fire for fire thing. Are we at a point in, the, in Nigeria's life where we need, I mean, because we've seen soldiers, we've seen, um, the, I mean, we've seen all kinds of force being put out, but then the, the reactions we get is not a ceasefire. We don't see people, um, you know, stepping back. We still see more and more happening. Um, 
Is it true for those who are saying that the president is biased, for those who are saying that the president's body language is not that of unity, even though he says it with his mouth, um, do you think that the president really wants the unity of this country if in one breath he's saying one thing and in another he's saying something else? How do we not, because you said that we need to band together as Nigerians, but if the leader of the country is not pointing us in that direction, what do we do? You see, sometimes I get uh, confused when people are equating the entire region with the action of some pocket of criminals. Uh, from the response, Mr. Obani is giving the impression as if Mr. President is stretching the entire uh, uh, southern south, southeastern region. So you don't He's think that he, so you don't think the president the is threatening the, the entire southern region? The entirety of the people of the of, of the of the southeast. How I wish the president would be very decisive on the criminal that are making life difficult for us in the north. So if somebody should talk about violence, it should be us because when 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 it comes to life uh, is something that affects our life in the north we don't seem the, we don't see the president to be very decisive in deploying the military in deploying the police to tackle it How why do you think that's it deploy, why do you think the president is not that decisive that took place in niger state mr Bubaka, why do you think the president fire? is not decisive when it comes to what's happening in the north because a lot is happening and it's not just the northeast where we're dealing with boko haram we have uh, the North Central, we have the Middle Belt. There's a lot going on. And you have said that the president is not decisive. So I'm asking you, I'm putting the question back to you. Why do you think he's not as decisive as he is when it comes to other matters in the Southeast especially, but then he's very decisive, um, well, rather, he's m not decisive in, in the North, but he's very decisive in the Southeast. Why do you think so? But do you know, do you know, do you know one of the responsibility of every government is to maintain law and order? Okay. And then within the constitution, it's only the government that has monopoly of use of force. And when some people took up arm against the government and committing crime and, 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 and causing anarchy, and you expect the government to fold its arm, you remember a government legitimately have the right to deploy and use a force against any criminal element that are trying to disturb the peace of the country. So I, the, 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 what, what I cannot understand and how somebody will equate activities of criminals who are attacking police stations, who are attacking an INEC offices and all federal government facilities with the, with the entire interest of the, of the region. Are we saying that what the IPOP are doing are is, is, in, is in the best interest of the South, South, South East. Are we are saying that what the bandits are doing to, to the North, the presidency what is happening the in the North? Is it, so is it in the best interest of Nigeria we, we, we and Nigerians, Mr. We are Mr. Bubaka? The, 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 the point. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want to ask that same question to, to you. South people. So let's, let's, let's get this picture clear. Mr. Bubaka, are you saying... Yeah that what is happening in the north, in the Middle East, uh, in the Middle Belt, what's happening in Kaduna, what's happened in Niger a few days ago, is in the best interest of Nigeria and Nigerians? That is why we are saying that we, we, we expected the president to be decisive and bring an end to that. And if today we see the same president uh, rolling out uh, all the power behind him to go and stop the, the carnage that is taking place in the in, 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 in the south. So we should be the one to be complaining that when it affects our own life, we don't see the president doing that, uh, bringing the military, bringing the all the the coercive apparatus behind him to to to, to give us peace. So uh, we see this as a failure of the of, of the president, but not as a, 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 a an agenda uh, to, 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 to put some uh, certain section of this country at a very uh, difficult uh, period. We wish that uh, this threat uh, that is, 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 is given to IPOP should be given to the, to, 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 to the rural bandits who have made rural area in the northern Nigeria difficult. And we wish he's using this same uh, threat and deploying the capacity and the, all the forces against the Boko Haram because we want peace in the north. So we are not, we, we, our interest is to see that there is peace in the, in, in, in the entire northern country, which we are expecting the president to do. And All if right. he's not doing that, we see it as a big failure. But I'm beginning to be surprised when the president is taking steps to 
to arrest the degeneration that is about to engulf the entire eastern region and some people are complaining would they rather uh, uh, prefer that the government just sit by and allow the criminal to continue perpetuating the carnage and the anarchy they are they, 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 they are perpetuating i wonder so i just want to be clear i is i is i put the same thing as uh, the, 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 the 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 southeast or they are two different things. Okay. So they are two different things. For the president is threatening the criminals. So I wonder how some people will just uh, have headache about that. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to throw this back to Barry Obani because we're out of time. But I want to quickly uh, let's examine Mr. President's tweet because um, the Information Minister, uh, Mr. Lai Mohammed, has come out to say that Twitter has already taken sides in this matter, especially with the fact that the president was threatening, um, you know, on the issue of. Um, uh, you know, civil war, and people said that you know, if he that, that that there are many other ways the president could have put out this statement, especially on social media. And let's not forget, the president of a free world was also banned from social media. I'm talking about former president Donald Trump. So our president is not going to be the first, but he, our president has not been banned. His tweets has been deleted because it somewhat um, infringes on the rights of, uh, rather, it violates uh, you know the rules and regulations of posting on that social media platform, Twitter. So, Barisal Bani, um, let's quickly look at that and um, the concerns that have been raised and, of course, Mr. Lai Mohammed's response to Twitter. Okay, is contradicting himself. He said it earlier that what the president should employ now is the language of uh, unity. Uh, you know, he said it about he's contradicting himself now by the statement is nobody supporting crime. And I said it earlier. That what is going on in the south is something that is condemnable. Is level of insanity is something that we should not in any way tolerate. We all need peace, you know, to develop our environment. So the issue of going to burn down police and then kill policemen. Now, what is going on in the east? I just read a report. I don't know how true it is. Given by one credible agency, that a lot of uh, boys now are being, you know, arrested and most of them have been killed, and they label them as terrorists, you know, as a uh, IPOB uh, armed wing ECN. And eliminate them and they and they give names of those men that have been arrested and killed and all that i don't know how true that is and all that that's the kind of thing that happened when a president you know is not employing the approach you know uh that seems to actually bring peace but once you go about it by way of threatening uh, the people and if you keep on threatening people and unleash army on the populace we are creating more confusion and then they begin to remind us of the war are you praying for a push a war so that we go back to 1960 where you guys were 13 months in the bush and all that that is not the kind of language and that's why that language was pulled down because it fell short of standard you know allowed on, the, on a, in a modern age you know it fell that it fell that standard and that's why it has been pulled down what we want to say is that what is happening in nigeria is not a normal thing and it came as a result of series of years of misgovernance and not paying attention to basic things we're supposed to do one we're supposed to address the issue of uh, education we failed to address the issue of basic infrastructure that's supposed to be in place that will generate employment as i speak to you today the number of people that are unemployed in nigeria is more than 40 or 50 percent of the populace all right. Now, that brings frustration because economic inequality brings frustration and all that. So people are really, really frustrated. People are really, really angry. At the slightest provocation, they take up arms and then issue of politicians also who have armed these guys. And after using them, they just dump them. Meanwhile, those guns are not taken away from them. So he has now created an army of disgruntled people who are armed. And they're using it now in a manner that is actually putting all of us in a state of un un safety. So it is important we understand this. So the approach now will be the pre president to address some of the things that people are complaining about, unemployment, economic equality, justice and fairness. By the okay. time you begin to enthrone all this kind of principle in governance, eh, it's not by God. We need Nations to go. do not win by gun. The okay. number of guns you have, by the number Bani, of armed men you have, we're out the number of, of time. and empty, you know, without any you know, real or threat, you we're make. Out of time. It is by way of serious governance that has affected the lives of the people, okay. that will make people to say, oh, I'm going to give my support to this government. But All the right. moment you begin to threaten... By Stalbani, we have to go. Unfortunately, we're out of time. I, I want to thank you, by Stalbani, and of course, uh, Marita Labubaka. Thank you very much for being part of this conversation, but time is not our friend right now. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Okay. All right. My pleasure. Thank you. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, how do Nigeria's security challenges affect 
humanitarianism in Nigeria. Well, we'll be right back because we'll be talking with the ICRC, especially with uh, the regions in where we have IDPs. Uh, these people are going to be sharing their experience with us and how all of this insecurity in this country has displaced people. Stay with us.